Mr. Governor. Mr. Governor. Mr. Ambassador. Mr. Governor. Mr. Governor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Please. Moving forward for some productive discussion with you, maybe we find a new way to collaborate. Well, yeah, well, thank you very much, Ambassador. You know, uh, thank you for taking uh, the time to meet with us. A very uh, strong interest from uh, the participants uh, of the MCT. And uh, uh, you know, one thing we've been concerned is the recent uh, development in, uh, between Ukraine and, and Russia. This war in Ukraine brought back the whole topic of nuclear threat on the table. Mm -hmm. To be very honest, in the last 10, 15 years, Kazakhstan and uh, Japan, as very active countries that work on new nuclear non-proliferation, mm -hmm. found a little lack of response and understanding of how relevant it is. Because people thought, okay, this is past, the situation stagnant, nothing can be done, no one's going to use it. But now with the Ukraine, the real war and the real threat, people are understanding that this threat is not theoretical. Mm -hmm. We cannot predict what uh, Russian leadership might decide tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And that brings us all to the edge. Mm -hmm. And uh, the situation uh, is very, very risky. So we do hope, as you, uh, that uh, speakers at this NPT will raise awareness, mm -hmm. and it will not turn into just another UN mm -hmm. event, mm -hmm. but uh, a meaningful mm -hmm. gathering of people mm -hmm. who are really concerned mm -hmm. of what might happen. Mm -hmm. And I've read the statement, and I, I really support all four mm -hmm. concepts and steps uh, on nuclear reduction, rethinking reliance on nuclear deterrence. That's very political, very difficult. It's very difficult to convince countries that have been relying on nuclear weapons for, for so many years to give it up. But I think we should be pushing. Kazakhstan has been always active on that because we have a moral right to, to say that because we used to have a nuclear weapons as a part of Soviet arsenal mm -hmm. and we potentially had a chance to leave it in our country as our own national. Arsenal, and we would be number four nuclear country in the world. <laughs> but we decided to give it up. Mm -hmm. And since then, I think we feel much more safer. Mm -hmm. Because if we put it simple, the first strike will be against those who have nuclear weapons, because they are the most dangerous. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. Uh, and so we can uh, share that experience and tell uh, and argue that nuclear deterrence doesn't do it it increases the chances mm -hmm. that it might be used. So, uh, taking seriously nuclear disarmament, this is something that I just referred to. I think nuclear uh, threat in Ukraine really made people think that nuclear disarmament is a serious goal. So hopefully this event will raise that awareness. Revitalizing nuclear arms control negotiations. We've seen that uh, American side both uh, reshape the start agreement with uh, Russians, which is a good sign, but the timing is wrong. Russians not going to talk about that, but this is already a signal that uh, there is a political desire. And the bracing their risk reduction, well, I mean, it's, it's more of a, it's not for the politicians, I think, this is for the community. I think that in this time, people around the world, including children in school, they should be aware about the nuclear mm -hmm. arms and nuclear disarm and nuclear threat mm -hmm. to the same extent as they are aware about climate change. Every children know about climate change, melting glaciers, mm -hmm. they know about that. But if you ask them about nuclear threat, some of them don't know that nuclear weapons have been used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They don't just they don't know history. Many of them don't know that the largest nuclear test site was located in Kazakhstan and 456 nuclear tests were carried out in, in my country. So we should raise this over. It should be a hot topic. It should be, let's say, a fashionable to topic to talk about for youngsters because it's kind of, you know, cool to be an environmental activist for young people now. Well, let's make them to be cool, to 
to be activist uh, for nuclear disarmament and uh, not nuclear non-proliferation. So, but this is more of a community work. Media, celebrities, they should talk about it. I don't know a single celebrity, a pop star, a TV star who talks about nuclear disarmament. They talk about environment or gender or some other hot topics. But we should make this a hot topic, and I think uh, the conference that is taking place right now uh, in New York should work. Uh, people should start to realize that this is a, a real threat. And the worst part of it is that climate change can potentially destroy life, but it will take many years, decades, and we hope to know. But if this thing goes wrong, it will take one week less at least. To destroy a lot of lives, infrastructure, and basically change the life. So that's that's a very crucial point. So I'm looking forward uh, for the outcomes. Because the, the awareness is now higher uh, as with uh, the Ukraine crisis, uh, I think we should use this as a kind of springboard to leverage uh, this uh, uh, event and to to discuss uh, or uh, even raise more awareness uh, among people. Uh, uh, and also uh, policymakers, uh, and, and think seriously about uh, uh, nuclear deterrence and disarmament. The initial uh, point or, or initial reactions of policymakers and the kind of public sentiment and are, you know, we need stronger nuclear deterrence. We need to be uh, tougher mm -hmm. to deal with the uh, you know aggression. But uh, if you think very carefully. And again, as you said, the nuclear deterrence is not necessarily making you safer, uh, but uh, uh, even uh, be more fragile. And you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, you know possibilities of accidents or miscalculations or you know new technologies uh, that could uh, invoke yes. uh, nuclear warfare. The second point is the public awareness, and. Um, as you said, uh, the people are very much aware of uh, uh, the global warming and, and now pandemic. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. These are risks that uh, uh, the global uh, uh, people are facing and they all feel it. And now they, um, uh, but, but not, uh, I mean, nuclear issues are not as much to the extent of those uh, other issues. So we decided to make coalitions with the uh, you know other those global issues mm -hmm. like global warming mm -hmm. and and uh, form a kind yeah. of joint front and put the agenda uh, including the nuclear uh, elimination in the uh, post SDG global agenda. Thank you. We yes. YASPA uh, stands for the Global Alliance Sustainable Peace and Prosperity for All. And this is a joint front again with uh, other global issues. YASPA will work as a platform of uh, uh, non governmental organizations uh, to uh, discuss and, and promote mm -hmm. uh, uh, the issue. And we would like also to form a group of French meeting, which would be uh, will consist of uh, uh, countries. You know, finally, the, the decision that the UN would be done by the state parties. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to form this group of French meeting among the uh, uh, countries and, and with the, the NGO's efforts and, and nation states' effort to for the nation agenda. And, uh, that's the uh, UN's goal. Well, thank you very much for sharing this. And thank you for sharing the overview of Casper. Uh, in case of Kazakhstan, we would like to be involved uh, in any activity. I think in case of our country, the, the strongest uh, advocate for nuclear disarmament is the government, so I mean, we are the best on that. Uh, we have NGOs working on that as well, but uh, this is the issue that is taken very seriously at the level of our president, our government, and we are pleasantly surprised that nuclear abolition uh, in your strategy, has a date 2045, which our president also suggested in 2019 at the General Assembly. He said it will be a centennial of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. 
So if we work very hard, as from now, it is very possible by 2045 to have a world free of nuclear weapons, not of nuclear energy, but nuclear weapons. How do you want to follow up uh, on, on this conversation? Uh, because we will be taking, we will be hosting yes. outside side events. Again, we are very vocal. Our first deputy minister of foreign affairs came to New York and he spoke yesterday and the day before. Uh, so you can rely on, on the government of Kazakhstan mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to yeah. the issues of nuclear non proliferation. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, there are uh, already some companies we, which has shown interest in, so we'd like to kind of coordinate to develop this uh, group of friends meeting. And, and of course, uh, if you know, uh, NGOs and NPOs who would be interested in uh, participating in GASPA. GASPA is going a little bit ahead. Uh, we've already uh, decided uh, 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 activities and, and you know, we'll start discussion about uh, you know, what we're going to do. Well, this is just a new initiative, so you know, we'd like to develop uh, as we go the device or, or uh, uh, talks with, with, you know, with you and other so let us study this. Mm -hmm. At this moment, I would say our office will be the focal point because okay. we are the one you met first, you yes. presented this. Mm -hmm. So let us see how it works. We really appreciate that uh, this uh, alliance is already looking beyond 2030. Everyone knows that sustainable development goals will not be fulfilled by that mm -hmm. time. Right? You know, there will be extension. Some of them will be, uh, maybe something else will be added. Some of them will be upscaled or decreased, but we're all realistic. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, important that when the new agenda comes, mm -hmm. the nuclear abolition should be one of the SDGs. Yes. Because, as I said, if we think about real existential threats to humanity, I think number one, the most dangerous is the use of nuclear weapons. Then you can speak about climate change, then you can speak about pandemic of any kind, yes. But nuclear weapons, they are there, they are in abundance, mm -hmm. there is enough political, I would say, unpredictability and craziness in the current world that they might be used. So if you look at the level of potential existential threat, I think nuclear weapons are the most dangerous threat to humanity in the world. And strangely, it is not discussed at the level it should be. It is considered as if something from the science fiction mm -hmm. or from the past. Mm -hmm. And we should change that. So do rely uh, on us, uh, on our government. Uh, and let's, let's take it from here. Uh, we're going to study this. If you have, will have any event on Gaspa, on this vision here yes. or somewhere else, mm -hmm. uh, Yes. So that's a correspondence, maybe we'll yes. be able to, to yes. take part. And we'd like also to work with your embassy mm -hmm. in Tokyo too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you very much. You know, I, I, you know, in the uh, TPNW meeting, you know, we know that you've shown uh, a very strong leadership and, and we appreciate it. And, and I hope, uh, you know, as you said, uh, the uh, Prime Minister, uh, he's here uh, for the MPT too, so I hope uh, you will uh, continue to be one of the leaders uh, of this uh, nuclear disarmament. We'll yeah. do our best. Yeah. We'll do our yeah. best. Uh, on the 7th of September this year, there will be a special session of the General Assembly of the United mm -hmm. Nations. All the countries will come uh, on the occasion of the International Day uh, against nuclear tests. And this day was officially adopted and recognized by the UN, uh, by the Initiative of Kazakhstan, we pushed for a certain resolution. So 29th of August officially is the day, International Day Against Nuclear Test. So we'll have an event here, and then uh, we will be chairs of the first committee on uh, General Assembly 77. It's going to be a tough year on that particular issue, I think because of Ukraine, but we are ready to take on this chairmanship and steer the work of this commission committee uh, into the constructive level. So Your precious experience would be very useful and helpful in this regard. Maybe one of your, a group of your experts could visit uh, 
Kazakhstan, Kiribati, and other countries uh, suffered from nuclear testing. And you can help. We we have a solid uh, experience on decontamination of mm -hmm. the territory of the semi nuclear test site. Uh, and the rehabilitation, remediation, all these processes uh, are crucial for those countries. And we are going to establish an uh, international trust fund in order to gain support from, from abroad. It doesn't matter whether this is a state party to the treaty or not. Even uh, you know, the person uh, can uh, support. And it doesn't necessarily need to be a financial support. So it can be any expertise, knowledge, uh, equipment. Uh, in, in our case, we can send our experts to Kiribati uh, to help them how, how to how to tackle this pro programs, uh, problems. And uh, this paper uh, outlines uh, major ideas and we would like to share with you. And uh, this process now is going on in the intersessional period. And if you're interested, uh, very welcome to, to join us. And we have our NGOs uh, that might join uh, GASPA uh, in, in our turn. Uh, and uh, some main point of contact, of course, will be our mission, but uh, we, we can involve as, as many as possible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. To the NGOs with your permission, and you <coughs> yes. Yes. So they are aware. Yes. The truth is that there are a lot of people, a lot of organizations, around the world that are working mm -hmm. on nuclear design, non-proliferation, mm -hmm. all these issues. But sometimes they just don't know that they exist. And the, the, right. our job is to yeah. bring them together yeah. and you will be pleasantly surprised how people are enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. uh, but they need more to be more organized, mm -hmm. to be uh, a real force for good, mm -hmm. as we say. And to be more visible. Yes, exactly. The awareness is mm -hmm. crucial. Mm -hmm. This process. Well, that's why we, we in the <coughs> UN building there is a, a hall called the Summerman Hall. Where they have expositions of the history of the Summer. And uh, the sad story of Hiroshima and Nagasaki pictures and everything stand next to the photo exhibition of semi Pilates nuclear test site. So even at this exhibition, we are next to each other. And mm -hmm. I think uh, we should be one of the countries that are proactive, mm. because we know how terrible and uh, traumatic it can be. We have a moral right mm. to ask for more from the politicians and society. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. It's been a pleasure.